Occupational Therapy students from Sandbridge University. My name is Regina E. Remington Markwell. And I'm Andrew Coleman. As part of our Master Thesis project, under the guidance of our thesis advisor, Dr. Alice Chung, we have created a pilot educational video for occupational therapists. The purpose of this video is to introduce air augmentation as a stroke rehabilitation intervention to occupational therapy. Our course will consist of a brief introduction to air augmentation, an overview of current literature we have found on this topic, and lastly, we will provide four demonstrations of air augmentation techniques that address functional independence in occupations that individuals post-stroke may experience challenges with. So what is air augmentation? Air augmentation is a fairly new concept to occupational therapy that aims to improve and adapt motor learning. It is a technique that amplifies errors in someone's movement pattern with the goal that these errors will provide cues that give someone opportunities to make corrections and adjustments to their movements. Since feedback mechanisms are often damaged with neurological injury, making errors more obvious to the sense provides the individual with better feedback. Air augmentation essentially proposes that an individual may learn more effectively when the error being addressed is increased. This concept has shown promise as an intervention approach because it isolates and enhances movement errors which promotes changes in movement control. This kind of feedback may seem counterintuitive and it differs greatly from common rehabilitation methods since rarely does a therapist try to amplify a patient's errors. However, according to Abdullahi and researchers in 2013, error-driven learning processes are believed to be central to the reacquisition of skill in human movement. There is growing evidence to support the use of air augmentation in stroke rehabilitation as individuals who have had a stroke may often have impairments in both motor skills and control. Now, I will be going over a brief overview on the literature we found on air augmentation. In a study completed by Lewin researchers in 2018, air augmentation was found to be a more effective option when reshaping movements in post-stroke individuals when compared to conventional repetitive motor recovery. Air augmentation has specifically been shown to enhance motor performance of the upper extremity and boost learning in stroke survivors through a process referred to as neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to change and adapt. When a stroke occurs, neural connections or pathways that retrieve and store information can be impacted and the severity may vary by individual. Because of this, it is important to take advantage of neuroplasticity during every stage of the stroke recovery process. Utilizing the concept of neuroplasticity allows an individual who has suffered a stroke to relearn motor skills and regain motor control. Through the use of task-specific activities, we can alter patterns in the affected area of our brain by performing movement tasks for the purpose of motor learning. Israeli and researchers in 2017 used evidence-based literature to justify the use of air augmentation for upper extremity stroke rehabilitation over traditional methods. Our literature review supports the use of air augmentation as a stroke rehabilitation intervention, allowing the damaged nervous system to learn and adapt movement patterns. So why are we researching this topic and how is it relevant to occupational therapy? According to Israeli and Carmeli, as of 2016, there have only been eight quantitative studies published on air augmentation in stroke rehabilitation. Even though there is limited research on the topic of air augmentation, the results of these studies have shown air augmentation to produce more beneficial therapeutic outcomes. Amplifying errors can retrain the brain and lead to more successful outcomes in motor learning and recovery. Occupational therapy practitioners can implement air augmentation techniques to guide patients in practicing movements and skills needed for their activities of daily living. Now, we will be demonstrating four air augmentation techniques utilizing common rehabilitation items found in a clinic. It is important to note that these methods we will be demonstrating have not been validated by research. They are based on the theory of air augmentation and have been adapted from other research studies. We will now be demonstrating a bilateral reaching activity using a TheraBand to amplify a reaching error. In a study completed by Abdullahi and researchers in 2018, robotics were used to create errors during bilateral reaching activities of post-stroke rehabilitation patients. This study found greater improvement in the group in which error augmentation methods were used compared to groups that did not. We will be replicating this technique 
using a TheraBint to create an error during a bilateral reaching activity. This activity relates to occupational therapy because bilateral arm training is essential in addressing upper extremity paresis after one suffers a stroke. It is important to train and assess unilateral and bilateral upper extremity functioning as bilateral reaching is important for self-care activities such as dressing, feeding, grooming, bathing, and personal hygiene. To start, the therapist will have the patient sitting at a table and will place two cups in front of them. The therapist will instruct the patient to reach for the cups with both hands. As you can see, the patient is having difficulty with their line of reach toward the cup on the right side. To address this issue, the therapist will now attach a TheraBand to the patient's right affected wrist. Next, the therapist will once again instruct the patient to grab both cups. As the patient begins to miss the target, the therapist will pull the patient further away from the non-affected hand in order to increase the air. This will cue the patient to self-correct and attempt to resist the amplified air in a more controlled manner so that they can bring themselves closer to the target. The therapist will remove the TheraBand from the patient's wrist and instruct them to grab both cups again. As you can see, the patient's right arm is moving closer towards the target than previously observed. Now we will be demonstrating a feeding activity addressing poor hand-to-mouth coordination. The equipment needed for this intervention includes a an utensil and an ankle weight. An individual post-stroke may experience challenges with feeding due to difficulty with hand-to-mouth coordination and weakness of the upper extremity. Using this method, we will be using an ankle weight to create an error. The goal of this is to make the act of bringing the hand to the mouth more difficult so that the patient has an easier time performing the action once the weight is removed. This technique is an occupation-centered intervention that aims to enhance the patient's ability to engage in eating and feeding activities. First, the therapist will have the patient sitting at a table. Next, the therapist will instruct the patient to grab the utensil using their affected side, which in this case is the right. They will then instruct the patient to bring the utensil to their mouth. As you can see, the patient is having difficulty completing this task due to weakness and the patient can be seen compensating by hiking their right shoulder up to get the utensil closer to their mouth. The therapist will then apply an ankle weight to the patient's affected wrist. The therapist will instruct the patient to once again grab the utensil and bring it to their mouth. The additional weight to the wrist will make this task even more difficult for the patient to complete. However, once the weight is removed, the patient will have an easier time bringing the utensil to their mouth. The therapist will now remove the weight. Once the weight is removed, the therapist will instruct the patient to bring the utensil to their mouth once again. As you can see, the patient still shows difficulty reaching towards their mouth, but there is slightly less compensation of the right shoulder and you can see that the patient has brought the utensil significantly higher and closer to their mouth than before. We will now be demonstrating an air augmentation technique for a posterior lean which is commonly seen in post-stroke individuals. We will be using a two-handled resistance band and a gait belt to help stabilize the patient to prevent possible falls. Two therapists will be present for this technique to ensure the safety of the patient. One therapist will be holding the bands that are attached to the patient while the other is standing in front of the patient to ensure safety. The therapist holding the resistance band will apply force posteriorly in the direction of the lean to create an even greater error forcing the patient to exaggerate a lean in the opposite direction. This technique can be used in occupational therapy as supported by Verhaden and researchers in 2014 that found that impaired postural control and proprioception may be underlying factors of poor trunk control. 
This technique works on strengthening the patient's trunk muscles and maintaining proper alignment of the spine for dynamic standing balance and trunk control needed for activities of daily living. First, Remy will put the resistance band around the patient's waist. Next, he will apply resistance posteriorly, cueing the patient to lean anteriorly to maintain their balance. Once the resistance band is removed, the patient will be in a more upright standing posture. Lastly, we will now demonstrate a technique that addresses pusher syndrome. For this technique, we will be using a gait belt to maintain the patient's safety and an ankle weight to amplify the lean to the affected side, which in this case is the right side. Addressing pusher syndrome is important in stroke recovery as patients may have difficulty participating in everyday activities. Also, this deficit may impact their ability to perform daily tasks that require perception of their body position in relation to their environment. First, we will have a patient sitting at the edge of the mat. Then, Andrew will put on the ankle weight to their affected side. With the affected side to the edge of the mat, we will allow the weight to create an even greater lean so that the patient can perceive the lean which they were not aware of prior to the weight being added. While the patient is in this position, it is important to stand on the affected side to maintain their safety. Once removing the ankle weight, the patient will overcorrect to account for the weight that was previously there, bringing them closer to midline. Our educational video aims to introduce error augmentation to occupational therapy and to provide practitioners with more strategies and resources for a novel, innovative intervention approach that is supported by research literature. As previously mentioned, air augmentation is a topic that has been largely unexplored in the field of occupational therapy. We hope that our study presents the need for more research opportunities for this intervention technique in occupational therapy and stroke rehabilitation settings. We want to thank you for taking the time to participate in our research project and ask that you please follow the link below to complete a quick 10-minute survey regarding the educational video.